What's going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? What I have for you today in this video video is actually a video comparison of the Google Maps application that Google created by themselves for iOS 6 versus the stock Google app that used to be on iPhone OS 1.0 all the way up to iOS 5.1.1 until it has been deleted in iOS 6. Now why was it deleted you guys are kind of asking? Well, it's because that uh, Google's license with Apple has expired, so uh, they decided that they had to get rid of the app, uh, and then Apple created their own, which you see right here. But unfortunately, it wasn't uh, the best mapping system out there, and a lot of people miss Google Maps, so Google made this uh, so that way uh, people get the best mapping experience out there, and believe me, I actually prefer Google Maps of over Apple's Maps. At first, I was like, wow, Apple's Maps is amazing. But then the 3D effect didn't really excite me too much. I'd rather go for the Street View effect versus the 3D effect. But anyway, you guys, I remember a while ago, I did a, a video comparison of the stock YouTube app versus the YouTube app that Google created on their own. Again, same reason why they did that. The original YouTube app has been deleted in iOS 6, so uh, it actually took me a while for, for me to get to this video right now, but uh, I'm excited to actually show you guys the differences between Google's uh, mapping system for iOS 6 versus the stock Google app uh, that they had. So, well, without further ado, let's get to it, and please note, this is running on my iPhone 3G with iOS 4.2.1. And it's currently jailbroken, but I put it in safe mode so that way it'll, it'll cooperate with me properly here. So, let's actually launch them both. No, this is not any speed test or anything. And plus, we all know iPhone 3G is slow as crap on iOS 4. Okay, now first things first. When you have the Google Maps application for iOS 6, it says location services disabled. You want to enable location services, and here's why. GPS purposes. So that way, uh, if you uh, were doing turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is actually preloaded on this app, that's one thing about this app right here versus the uh, stock Google Maps application back in the day, was that you had turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and that's why you want the location services enabled on there. So let's take a look at the differences here. So first of all, what do you see? You see different user uh, interfaces right here. Uh, but of course... Things that are similar are the search bars right here, and then you have this little button right here, and it allows you uh, to pick your pinpoints on where you want to go, from you know, your starting position to your destination, as you can see, and you can do it by, uh, of course, motor vehicle, you know, which is probably what you'll be doing most of the time, or by doing public transportation or walking. Alright, you can hit cancel on that. And as you can see, you look over here on the stock uh, Google Maps application, you don't have that. Uh, the only way you can access that is if you click the directions button right here. And then, there you go, current location or to your destination as well. Uh, and you can switch between the tabs for search or directions. And of course, you, know, you can reverse the directions or uh, if you want, you can clear uh, all the addresses out there that you have pinned. And of course, over here, current location buttons. Yeah, again, like uh, for this app right here, there is no switch to enable location services uh, or switch it off. It's there automatically. The only time you actually turn it off is if you actually uh, click this button right here. And if it's uh, highlighted light blue, and then that means location services is on. And then it'll pinpoint your current location. This one, you actually have to go into the settings app and then you go to privacy, location services, and then you have to switch on location services. But the reason why I did that is so hmm, nobody can know my current location. That was my purpose for turning it off for this video. And then, of course, yeah, this button right here, my profile, you can sign in into your Google account. And then you have certain settings right here. So you have sign in, send feedback, shake to send feedback, tutorials, and help about terms and privacy. Alright, and then 
of course, no, nothing much right here. This blue button right here is actually your bookmarks. So that way you can go to all the addresses you had saved or you can actually go to your contacts, go into the contact directly. And then if you set it up with a address over there, then you can click on that address to either search it or have that be part of the directions that you are pinpointing. All right. So uh, on this app right here, you have this little tab right here. You can either push it or slide it, and you have traffic. You can show uh, how bad the traffic is on the road, public transit, satellite, or if you have Google Earth installed, uh, you can actually view uh, this on Google Earth, or just open up, you hit satellite. Same thing with over here on the stock Google Maps application. You can actually drop a pin, hide the traffic. You can go to map, satellite, hybrid, or list, and it basically just lists the directions or whatever you're searching all right and of course traffic we have, we all know what that does now let's say if I want to search something I'll do JFK Airport in New York I'll do the same thing right here all right so here's the airport now when you search up an address you have different ways of viewing uh, its uh, details, all right? Uh, we'll start uh, with the new application. So you can actually route this from your current location, but again, location services, I disabled that on this phone right here, or you can actually tap it, tap it again to hide it, slide it up to see the details again. You can then have call, save, share, uh, whatever, message, mail, copy the clipboard, and it gives you the address of the area you are looking at. And of course, if a specific place has more info, you can go to their website or open hours, in this case at the airport, and then uh, comments uh, about how people felt about this place. And of course, you have 37 photos right here. You know, you can view different pictures, stuff like that. Alrighty, now, with the stock Google Maps application, you have to tap the pin and uh, you uh, either get that orange um, button or you get the arrow. The orange button is for street view and the arrow, it lets you view all the details uh, as we just saw right here. Now, uh, the thing with the new app is that you actually tap and hold. You can actually drop your own pin on there. All right, this one, you, know, you can't do that as you can see. What you have to do is go into this button right here, go on this flap and hit drop pin. And it'll uh, allow you to drop your own pin anywhere you want, uh, which is what I wanted to do. And now I dropped it somewhere where I can go to Street View. Now, I wanna start with the new app first. So let's say if I go to Street View, all right? I, I can actually view it in portrait, as you can see, or I can do it in landscape. All right, and you can hit the reverse, yay. Which I'm not actually sure what that button does. Oh well, but as you can see, you can pan around. You know, you go to this arrow right here. It brings you up. Click on this arrow. It brings you back. All right, as you can see right there, and switch it back to portrait. Show all the options again. Okay. You, you actually click on this dotted circle right here. You can either go to report a problem or if there's no problem, then you just cancel it out. Now, if you were to do street view on the stock Google Maps application, this is all you get. And you can't um, view it in portrait mode if you wanted to. All you can do is pan around and you actually have to pan around and then click on the arrow for whichever direction you want to go to and you tap it to see all your options. You don't really have much options, uh, just like the new Google Maps application. You, know, you either have report or done, and you were also able to click on that compass to exit back into your map. And, and I'll actually show that really quick. All right, and we'll go back here as well. Now, uh, let me just, uh, uh, say some stuff over here. So, of course you're going to need internet in, in order to view your maps, right? 
especially if you are doing turn-by-turn -turn navigation. However, the, both these phones contain a built-in GPS inside, and this is really uh, amazing, and you have iPhones. If you have iPod Touches, you are out of luck. Now, you can't be able to take advantage of this uh, feature right here. So, if you have a GPS uh, built into your phone, and for some reason you don't have an internet connection like me, I can only rely on Wi-Fi for both of these phones, and I don't have any cellular connection because both of these phones are not activated on the plan. Well, yes, I won't be able to do turn-by-turn -turn navigation or through Street View on the internet. But, what I can do is actually view the map just like the way it is right now, just to see where I'm at. Alright, I can do that on the new app, but the uh, old app, I wasn't too sure if that was possible. So, we're actually going to see this for the first time. So, what I'm going to do is actually go into settings right here, and I'm going to just shut off Wi-Fi. So, I'm shutting it off right now so you guys don't think that I'm trying to hide anything. If this iPhone 3G would just hurry up, because we got a video to do right here, and this is already going over 11 minutes. Alright, so as you can see, I can still view the map uh, um, in this app right here. Uh, but, let's say if I try to do street view or something, it won't work. And then if I try searching other things, it's that's not going to work either. So, it, it, you actually have the location services enabled right here. You'll get a blue dot if you were to push that button. And as you are moving uh, in your area, wherever you're at, and uh, the blue dot uh, is there, it'll be moving uh, as you are going on with your journey. And there's no internet connection required for that. For this app right here, I'm not sure if that was the case. I'm thinking that uh, it might be. Uh, let me just check that really quick. I haven't used this for a while, so I do apologize that uh, I did a delay in the middle of the video. But as you can see, it looks like you can do that because the, uh, the GPS radio must be active right now in order to pinpoint your location. And I'm assuming that it'll move as you are moving and when you have this device with you. So overall, what do I think hmm, about Google's process in terms of their mapping system? from the previous version to the most current version. Well, I think that this was a big step for Google because here's why. Apple failed so badly in their own mapping system that people uh, were reporting it that it was horrid and the 3D view was not worth it. And then Tim Cook uh, later out actually released a letter saying that uh, they were sorry that the mapping system you know, it wasn't as convenient as they hoped to be or hyped for it to be and they actually gave suggestions you know, on what kind of mapping applications you should get you know, for your iDevice and I'm thinking that Google didn't want to do this you know, because they, they probably have this already installed in their Android operating system but uh, they were probably like oh what the heck why don't we just uh, make one for our iOS customers uh, who are always loyal to uh, our mapping system. I used to think that Apple's maps was awesome and you get the 3D effect, but then I'm like, well, what's the point of the 3D effect and you can't even see the front of the building? I mean, you could, but you can't get a close-up shot. So, uh, I think Google did a fantastic job with their mapping application. Uh, of course, there are some um, cons that I have about it, but I'm not... Uh, able to say them yet. Like, I'm still trying to identify uh, what they are. Now, uh, which one would I prefer to use on a daily basis? The previous version or the newer version? Well, definitely the newer version because it, it, it's got more features because when they were trying to work with Apple, uh, I mean, they, uh, they, they probably were on limitations and stuff, whereas Google, if they were to make their own app, then they can do whatever they want, as they, you can see right here. But then again, if you are stuck with an iPhone 3G on, on on a contract or on a plan or something, and you don't feel like switching to a new phone, and you want to use Google Maps, this is uh, this 
app is just fine. Like, if we didn't have this, I can still use this just fine. Uh, but but now that you got this in a, in a game, you really have to pick which one you prefer. You know, me personally, I prefer this one because of course it's newer and it's uh, fully featured. Uh, but this video was just a comparison between the two you know, different apps that had happened in the previous years up to the current one with whatever happened between Apple and Google. Again, Google has done a great job. Their, their services are really great. Android is great. Of course, then again, we got iOS versus Android, but this is not what it's about. So what do you guys think? For those of you that have uh, that are still using the previous Google Maps application, and you just seen this video of how I compared the two, uh, are, is it going to make you want to get a new device and, and just for this Google Maps application, or maybe you just want to update uh, your device, or will you still prefer you know, using the previous Google Maps application sticking on the uh, older firmware? Leave it down in the comments down below right there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that social media stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. You have a good day now and take care, everybody.